Welcome to my channel. This tutorial uses the SARTOR system to draft a basic body block. With this system, all measurements are calculated as a proportion of the cape length. The body block is a useful base for creating vests, jackets, and coats for a range of historical periods. Check out my Patreon in the description below for a written guide for this tutorial and options for private tutoring in Glow3D. Let's get started. All right, the first thing that we're going to do is calculate a whole bunch of measurements. And just like the other blocks that are based on the Sard Horse system, all of these measurements are a proportion of the cape length of the person who will be wearing the garment. All of the measurements are in the description of the video. However, I recommend going to my Patreon and downloading the step-by-step -step PDF guide, which will auto-calculate and auto-populate all of the measurements that you need for this block based on just the height and the chest measurements and the amount of ease you would like for your garment. Once you have all of these measurements, we can go ahead and start drafting out the block. So let's go to the rectangle tool or the S hotkey that is right here in the 2D toolbar. Go ahead and click anywhere in the 2D window. And for width, we want to type in our chest width, which for me is 20 inches. And then for height, we want to type in our back waist length, which for me is 19 inches. Go ahead and click OK. I went ahead and labeled these corners A, B, C, and D. And now we can go to the edit pattern tool or the Z hotkey, and that is right here in the 2D toolbar. Right click line A, B, choose offset as internal line, and then type for number of offsets, just one, and then distance for everyone will be two inches, and then click OK. And this is our shoulder guideline. We're going to do basically the same thing again. So right click line A, B, and then choose offset as internal line. And then this time we're going to leave number of offsets at one and distance we want to be our chest height. So for me, that's 11.32. Then go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to right click line A, C and choose the same offset as internal line. And then this time we're going to do our half of our front width. So number of offsets one, and then distance is the half front width measurement, which for me is 7.85. And then similarly line BD, we're going to offset the back width. So right click offset as internal line, and then your half back width measurement, which for me is 8.62. Okay. Now we roughly know where our shoulder, our chest, and our front width and back width line are. We can go ahead and break up this middle square. This is going to be eventually our arm side. So we're going to give ourselves some reference points within these lines. Let's go ahead and go to the transform pattern tool or the A hotkey, and that is right here in the 2D toolbar. Let's shift click all of these internal lines that we made to select them all. And then while they're selected, right click the selection and then choose add point to intersection. I'm calling these new points that we made one, two, three, and four. And now let's go ahead and convert these lines to baselines. So again, with the transform pattern tool or the A hotkey, select all those lines again, right click the selection and choose convert to baseline. Now we want a few more guide points in here for our arm size. So let's go to the add point split line tool. That's the X hotkey. You have to click and hold the edit pattern tool to find it down here, right here, add point split line. And with that tool selected, let's right click the baseline one, three and choose uniform split and number of segments three. Okay, and we're going to call the second one of these points, um, ignore the first one, the second one we're going to call point five. Um, we're going to do that again with line three, four, with the add point split line tool, right click in baseline three, four, uniform split, this time just leave it at two. Okay, that point we're going to call point six. And then one last time, baseline two, four, right click, uniform split, okay and that will be 
Great, those are all the reference points we need for our arm side. Let's make the reference points for our front neckline. So we're going to go to the base rectangle tool, which is right here in the 2D toolbar. There is no hotkey. I'm clicking and holding on base polygon and finding base rectangle. With that tool selected, just click anywhere inside of your, your pattern here. And in this dialog box, we're going to type in our width is going to be our neck width. So for me, that's 3.17. And then height, we actually also want that to be our neck width. So 3.17. And now before we click OK, we're, let's actually be specific about where we want to place this base rectangle. I want to put it from the left, I want it to be 0.75 inches. And from the top, I actually want it to be zero inches. When I type in zero, you can see that it wants to like auto adjust it to 0 0.024. That's fine too, it's basically zero. So that just leave that there. And if your base rectangle is appearing near the top left corner of your pattern and offset by just a little bit that 0.75 inches then it looks good go ahead and click OK I want to name some of these points too but first I need to go to my 2d display options and unclick lock all baselines so that that is unlocked and then I'm going to label this point down here point 8 and this point up here point 9 now we're going to use the front neckline to figure out what we want to do for the back neckline. So uh, go ahead and go to the transform pattern tool or the A hotkey, click the, the front neck baseline, and then do control or command C to copy, and then control or command V to paste. Click anywhere inside this base pattern to place what it will be the back neckline. And now the only difference between the front neckline and the back neckline, it'll be the same width, but we want the back neckline to be one quarter of the height. So you see these bounding boxes that are around here because I have the transform pattern tool selected. Go ahead and click and drag maybe the bottom one and while you are still clicking with your mouse, um, before you let go, right click and an option to type in an exact mount will pop up. So for height, we actually want that to be 25% of what it originally was. Go ahead and click OK. And then now our back neckline is 25% smaller than our front neckline. We actually want to click and drag it outside of the pattern that we're working on. We'll need to make our pattern bigger later to accommodate for that, but for now, just place it right here. I'm calling this point 10 and this point 11, and point 11 should actually be intersecting point B. Okay, that's actually the only reference points we need to draft this block pattern. Now we can go to the internal polygon tool or the G hotkey. That's right here in the 2D toolbar. And we can start actually drawing the outline of our block. I'm starting at this point down here. I didn't name it. I'm just calling it the, it the chest line at center front. But it's basically where this baseline that we offset for the chest intersects line AC. So let's start there, just clicking once. Now click point 8. Now click point 9. And now... This one's a little bit trickier because we want the line length. You can see as I move my cursor, the length that's following the red line is changing. So right now it's 5.7. I want that line to read my shoulder length. My shoulder length is 6.25. So I'm just going to drag it along this shoulder guide baseline until the red line reads 6.25. So. 5.66 and about there. Perfect. And I'm just going to click once on the baseline to um, lock that in place. And now I just need to click point six and then I'm going to hold shift and then click actually double click line CD. So you can hold shift that will lock it to the X axis or you can also use this pink guideline to say, okay, that is exactly beneath that point. This is squared. Double click line C, D, and this is the rough outline of our front block. We're going to do something very similar on the back, except we're going to start by clicking on point 11, clicking on point 10, and then similarly to the front, we are going to drag this line now. It's going to be our back shoulder length. So 
Um, on the shoulder line, I'm going to drag this out until my back shoulder length, which for me is 6.75. So there we go. Just click that. Perfect. And the last thing we need to do here is just double click 0.6. And that is the rough outline of our back block. With those in place, we can go ahead and add curves now. So I'm going to go to the Edit Curvature tool or the C hotkey. That's right here in the 2D toolbar. You have to click and hold on Edit Pattern to find Edit Curvature. Let's start by clicking and dragging this front arm's eye line so that it intersects 0.5. And now the, let's click the back arm's eye so that it intersects 0.7. I am paying attention to um, this bottom part down here, I don't want it to be pointy. I want it to be actually a very smooth curve at the bottom. So um, do what you have to do to drag these um, into place so that they make a nice, beautiful arm's eye. Now I can click the front neckline, which is this line here. And um, I'm just kind of basically trying to get this to be right angles to both um, this line and this line. You can kind of imagine that I'm just basically turning this box into a circle too. And then similarly on the back. So we really want the angle into point 11 that right here, that to be squared and point 10 as well. All right, the very last thing we want to do is add just a slight curve to the back shoulder. So we'll do that with the edit curve point tool. So that's the V hotkey. And that is right here in the 2D toolbar. If you click and hold edit pattern, edit curve point. And we wanna put a curve point right in the center of this back shoulder line. So go ahead, and right click and then choose uniform split. Okay. And now we just want to drag it in ever so slightly. Truly, um, I'm just gonna click and drag and then right click so I can type in a number. I'm gonna leave distance moved alone. And then on the X axis, I want it to be 0.2 inches. And then the Y axis, I want it to be negative 0.2 inches. And that'll just move that curve in just, just ever so slightly. All right, so this is our front and back patterns. We're gonna go ahead and cut those out so that they exist independently from each other. But before that, because this internal line is actually outside of our baseline, we have to just click and drag this um, outer edge up to meet it. So I'm just using the edit pattern tool or the Z hotkey, clicking line A, B, and then pulling it up just to meet that point 10. That'll give us enough room to do what we need to do. All right, so let's do it. Uh, transform pattern tool, which is the A hotkey, shift click all of these internal lines, whoops, all of these internal lines that we made. So um, basically your front and your back. And then once those are selected, right click the selection and then choose cut. Now your patterns have been released from these extra pieces. I'm just going to now click those pieces. So this like neckline piece and then this oddly shaped piece now and then hit delete on my keyboard. And you can go ahead now and also um, duplicate these with symmetric sewing. So still with the transform pattern tool, I'm just going to shift click both of these pattern pieces. You can also do control or command A to select all and then do control or command D to duplicate with symmetric sewing and then click anywhere in the 2D window to place them. So the reason why I have you draft these patterns this way is because now these baselines, they automatically locked themselves on my program, but they are serve as a reference. You know, no, no matter what you do to these patterns, this is your front width guideline. This is your chest guideline. This is your neck guideline. This is your shoulder guideline. I would just keep those in these patterns as you work with them because they, they are actually excellent references that if you are following them, we'll make sure that you, you, the pattern that you make out of these blocks will still fit. With that being said, let's go ahead and sew these together. So I'm going to use the segment sewing tool, which is the N hotkey. And that's right here in the 2D toolbar. And I'm just going to click my center front line um, here and here. I'll, I'll do it up here as well, just to sew that. Um, let's do the center back line here to here. And then our shoulder line, I want to sew here to here and then our side seam line here to here. And if your um, sewing lines look like mine, then you did it right, so good job. <laughs> and now let's dress our avatar. So in the 3D window, we want to choose the Select Move tool. 
So that's the Q hotkey, and that's right here in the 3D toolbar. And when that tool is selected, go ahead and press Shift F on your keyboard. These blue dots will appear. And we want to dress our avatar. So I'm just going to click um, the front on the, I guess the left front. Somewhere on the left side, I'm going to click a dot that will place that in place. And then on the back, I'm going to click one of the back pieces, um, making sure that I'm not twisting them. There we go. That looks good. And once everything is in place, you can go ahead and press the space bar to simulate and you have your basic body block. From here, if you want to make an extended body block, you can offset the pattern from the waist down the crotch depth. Um, and then you can also add a drafting hip in here as well. But depending on what you are hoping to make after this, this is a great start to a block. All right. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.